This is Jack from Scout Radio and today I'm broadcasting from home in South London. So yesterday afternoon, the Prime Minister said that everybody in the UK should avoid non-essential travel and contact with others to minimise the spread of the COVID-19 coronavirus. Given this advice, all face-to-face scout meetings and activities have now been suspended from today, Tuesday the 17th of March. And this suspension applies to young people and adults until further notice. So joining me down the line is Tim Kidd, the UK Chief Commissioner. Tim, thanks for joining us. Most welcome, and I am joining you from home as well, although I'm in Oxfordshire rather than London. So Tim, so previous advice was that we were going to follow the closure of local schools. So so this has come as a bit of a shock to some people. So can you tell me how we, we got to this action and, and what the implications of that are? Okay, our previous advice was always to follow the government's advice. And what we said was, and if locally a school has closed because there was an outbreak and so on, then it would make sense to, to, to follow that. So there's a slight nuance from what you've just said, actually. Um, and so we've always been uh, following um, the government advice based on the, you know, the science and the expert opinions. Um, and we've all seen the, the stuff on the, the news and the, um, the, the, the PM speaking recently. So it was always to follow the government advice, but people were telling us that locally some schools had closed um, because there was you know, a deep cleaning because of some outbreak or something, in which case it makes an awful lot of sense if they're trying to contain an outbreak at that point to do what the local school was doing. So that was, that was actually the advice, so that makes some sense. So a number of scout groups were developing plans to assist their local communities during the pandemic. And can these sort of activities still go ahead? How can scouts best impact their local community at this time while staying safe? Yeah, I think we, we, what we've said in the email is that... Um, we, we do need to see, find some way that scouting can help respond to, to the current situation. It's not entirely, if I'm honest, it's not entirely clear to me how we quite do that yet. Um, I mean, at, at the very least, uh, you know, people can be in touch um, by the phone or whatever other, other means or, or, or notes through doors to say, we're thinking of you and so on to other people in the local community. Um, it's not quite clear to me yet what we do. Uh, I think the inventiveness of the movement is astonishing um, and the way in which people uh, really raise their game to to try and do whatever they can sensibly is, is really brilliant. And I've seen lots of that already on social media uh, last night. What we said in our um, update uh, that, we, that I sent out to everybody was, um, so I'll just quote this, I think it's, it's useful just thinking about just under the section called doing our bit. We said, I think we all agreed that it's in challenging times like these that our scout values matter most. We are talking to the government and other community organisations to see how scouts can support our country during this crisis. We must make sure we do this in the safest way possible and we don't put anyone at further risk. We'll update you more over the coming weeks. So we are having some discussions. It's not clear to me quite how we do all these things yet. But uh, I think that uh, uh, many of our leaders uh, will be already supporting people in their local community, whether that's um, you know offering to do the shopping for somebody who's more at risk and those sorts of things. Um, and, and we wouldn't you know want to stop anybody doing all the right stuff clearly as an individual. That's absolutely sensible. So we'll be having a look uh, at what we can do, and we will bring um, more information out as soon as we've got some uh, some some sensible sort of thoughts on that. So the suspension also raises some questions regarding international scouting. So I understand the European Jamboree haven't cancelled and are still planning to go. Go ahead. Are there any updates or advice to groups that are, are going to that particular event or other international events? Clearly, the people running the European Jamboree have to make their decisions based on uh, on the, the situation as they see it. Um, and so, uh, there's a, an FAQ on their website, and there's also a number of sort of statements explaining uh, what's what. Uh, what I think is all we can say at the moment is that. that groups that are, are planning to go need to, to check that um, frequently and see what's what they're saying. It's clearly their event to run rather than ours, so they have to make their decisions on it. Um, and uh, as, as always, with all visits abroad, uh, people going through our visits abroad process um, will have doubtless been through the process that that, that asks people to think through what they're doing, to think about insurance and those sorts of stuff. And so people, uh, as we've said a number of times in emails, will need to just check their uh, insurance uh, policies and check what all that says um, uh, if they're making decisions uh, to cancel. And I suspect that there'll be some groups that find themselves in a situation where uh, parents are, are not uh, happy for children to go and so the decision might be made in that way uh, but right now the latest that we've seen from the European Jamboree is that they are in, intending at the moment to continue um, and on their website they talk about the things that they're looking at and the ways in which they're making their decisions. Uh, I think for people in the UK uh, the ability to get there will be one of the uh, key issues that that, that must be on people's minds because the amount of uh, uh, flights that are being cancelled and so on um, 
you know, obviously will will make that more difficult, I'm sure, for people. So the best thing to say at the moment is it's someone else's event. Um, they are monitoring the situation. All the information is on the website, and the link to that is in the email that we sent to everybody uh, last night. So for everybody else who's not got a big international trip currently going ahead at the European International Jamboree, how can we keep scouting? Yeah, it's it's really important, I think, that uh, we think about all these brilliant ways we can do it. We're looking at the moment. We've got some work going on already uh, to, to find some ways that people might uh, distribute... Uh, some scouty stuff out to people at homes and, and find some way of p- pulling that together without everybody meeting face to face and there will be some more stuff coming up out on that shortly meanwhile I've seen uh, on social media last night uh, an astonishing number of people doing things I saw someone talking about their first remotely run beaver scout program uh, and they said uh, it went pretty well for the first attempt there's a few things that we'll do a bit better next time but it really did work um, and I've seen lots of other messages of people saying th- about things that they're doing so it will uh, send some more stuff out to people uh, over the coming uh, weeks uh, but meanwhile I think just thinking about um, uh, whether it's email contact in the first instance of some ideas of things to do or the latest badges they can do at home um, that that sort of thing would would clearly be good uh, and I think people will find more and more ways of doing stuff uh, electronically with young people and I also think it was it's important for um, our leaders and so on to keep in contact with one another as well because uh, uh, we shouldn't underestimate I think that for some people it will be a bit isolating with all these measures that, that the government's putting in place and we can as scouts do our bit following our scout values and, and make the world a bit of a kinder place so just being in contact with uh, members of your of your group or your district um, whether that's emails or telephone calls or, or video calls using quite a bit of technology that's around today I think will be a really good thing to do but there's more stuff coming out from us uh, soon in the next few weeks. And as a training advisor, uh, my eyes lit up slightly at the idea of the opportunity to get everybody to um, be validating and, and doing things for their wood badges while they're not so busy. Um, but some people are saying, obviously, training courses might be cancelled as we can't meet face to face. What's your, your advice and um, thoughts on training? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm a training advisor locally as well uh, um, in my local uh, county. And, uh, well, I, I, I like the idea that your eyes lit up. That's a really nice idea. Uh, there's opportunity in this. In all uh, darkest hours, there's opportunity, I think. And as scouts, we normally find that um, it, through our history. That's always been the way. So my sense is uh, already in my local county, they're looking at how they might do some uh, video stuff. They've already done some online. They've done some uh, personal learning plan sessions online already a, a, a month or two ago, actually. So they've already started playing with that technology. Uh, In terms of validation, I think um, you know that th- that's not too difficult to do quite a bit of that uh, online with people is it one to one with a, a video call or, or something like that that's quite easy to do but gathering it, it at training uh, courses at the moment is clearly not the, the thing to be doing in my view so I think that uh, there's a number of ways we could do it uh, technology is going to come to our aid at the very least some telephone calls with people and there is some stuff that people can do of course online uh, themselves it won't be a surprise to you or any of the listeners that, that I'm banging on about this as I have been for the last about five months or so uh, particularly to ensure that people have got their safety and safeguarding training up to date that you can do that online you can get a certificate from that send that to your training advisor and get that um, validated into compass so there is a chance I think you're right for a bit of uh, catching up on other things uh, whilst we haven't uh, got all the meetings running uh, people could do, do more things maybe not just training but they could uh, find the time to actually have a bit of moment to ponder what they're going to be doing um, in the uh, in the coming uh, year uh, things they want to organize and having a think about that um uh, also a bit of time quietly to sit down and update your risk assessments uh, for your headquarters or or for events and so on um whilst you've got a bit of moment to think might be concerned about income and running costs which might cause difficulties because they're they're closed is there any advice you can give to executive committees um, at the moment so the only thing that i can say is that because every situation is different executive uh, committees as trustees of the group or the district or the county uh, need to take a careful look at uh, what the situation is to project where that might go and what the issues are for them. Uh, think about what they might do. I think when the situation changes, because uh, uh, you know we will all get through this. It might be, you know, a difficult time, but we will all get through this. Um, and, and at one point, there'll be, uh, you know, restrictions will be lifted and things will happen. So think about what they're going to do to get their plans ready um, for that. 
And lastly, what can leaders do with all their newfound free hours a week? Well, I think I think it won't surprise you. A bit of training, folks. Get on with that. Um, go online, scouts.org.uk, and look on the and slash safety, for example, um, and look at all the safety stuff. Get yourselves up to date if you want to with uh, um, all of our activity stuff. So scouts.org.uk slash a hyphen z is the a to z of activities, which explains how you can run them safely, what to do, and and things to think about. That's it's a really good bit of the website. So have a look at that. Um, otherwise, I think be nice to people contact people, uh, uh, contact uh, uh, electronically perhaps the members of your section or your other leaders, uh, keep in contact with people in other ways. Uh, and occasionally, I think, get a bit of fresh air and go for a walk as well. Uh, but but I think, you know, on a serious note, there will be difficulties for, for families and, and there'll be some serious reflection of people, uh, you know, who've got friends or family um, who uh, are perhaps more at risk from this. Um, and so clearly uh, my thoughts are with those and that we should all stick together and find the best way possible to work through this and, and try and have a bit of fun and friendship whilst you're doing that. Thank you, Tim. Thank you so much for your time and for all your work at this difficult time. Thank you. And of course, thank you to all the volunteers everywhere who are going to make scouting work for us during this suspension. So remember, the best source of information is the government's coronavirus webpage, which is frequently updated as things develop. So please check it regularly at www.gov.uk forward slash coronavirus. The Scout Information Centre will only be able to deal with emails and web chat until further notice and is extremely busy. So the Scouts have also created a webpage, scouts.org.uk forward slash coronavirus, which will be updated from today. Scout Radio will be keeping you up to date with all the ideas that we find that might help you with your virtual scouting. So like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter to keep up to date.